produced by the Arnold State Executive House and Irene. The Arnold State Executive House, under the chairmanship of His Excellency, the Governor of Arnold State, Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduje, OFR, has unanimously approved the immediate removal, disthronement of the Emir of Kano Emirate, Mohammed Sunusi II. The Emir of Kano is in total disrespect, lawful instructions from the office of the state governor and the other lawful authorities, including his persistent refusal to attend official meetings and the programs organized by the government without any lawful justification, which amounts to total insubordination. It is on record, and in so many instances, Muhammad Isnusi II has been found breaching Part 3, Section 13A to E of the Kano State Emirate Law 2019, and which, if left unchecked, will destroy the good and established image of Kano State Emirate. This removal is made after due consultations with the relevant stakeholders and in compliance with the Part 3, Section 13 of the Kano State Emirate Law 2019 and the other reasons stated above. The removal was reached in order to safeguard the sanctity, culture, tradition, religion, and the prestige of the Kano Emirate built over a thousand years. His Excellency Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduje, OFR. I right, thanks for staying with us now. Governor Ganduji of Kano State, when asked in an in exclusive interview by Shane Okimo Okimoloe of Channel Television why he, he dethroned the former Emir Lamido Sanusi, explained in his words the deposed Emir did not understand the responsibilities of a traditional ruler. He further went on to explain how the former Emir did not apply tact in dealing with his superiors, citing examples of the allegations he made as CBN governor under his then boss experts in Jonathan's regime, his criticism of his predecessor, former Governor Kokonso's choice of um, projects. He also called him a celebrated social critic, which he had no problems with. He then went on to say, um, when he attained the position as Emir, he forgot that the institution had liabilities as it had assets that the deposed Emir failed to understand. So our focus tonight is how much does tact, you know, how, or how much tact rather do we apply as young people when dealing with our leaders? Is it possible that our quest um, to be seen, to be brutally honest, we have failed to understand the principles of emotional intelligence as we are always quick to take matters, you know, to the gram? And finally, what is the role of tact in rebuilding Nigeria? Those are our questions tonight. So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can always join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038466. Okay, let me come to my lawyer lady. Olam video Difade. I want to be brutally honest. That's your language. That's your line. Um, Lami, are you there? Yes, I am. <laughs> you know, that's your line. I have to be, I have to be brutally honest. And you do not... You, you yes, know. very brutal. So, um, when, I saw this, when I saw this video, you know, I'm, like I said, uh, or as I had mentioned earlier, I'm not a fan of Governor Ganduji. Honestly speaking, I'm not his Ganduji. fan. But for the first time, I sat down patiently and I, I listened to that interview. In fact, I watched it about three times 
when he was just explaining certain things. And he now got me, the thing just hit me that, is it possible that maybe this is how our leaders see us? When we start to scream sorrows, okay, this one, that one, you know, and we go all over social media trying to, you know, right or wrong that we, I mean, of course, we, we know that there are so many things going wrong in our country. And remember, we've been talking about the Lekki protests, we've been talking about a lot of things, and we've been asking, what would, be, what would seem to be like the right strategy, right, in dealing with these leaders? And it just occurred to me that, have we really thought about what, you know, what tact or what role tact will play in handling some of these leaders, where you're telling, I mean, it was Winston Churchill, I think, that said, you know, you tell somebody to go to hell and the person will look forward to it. It's a quote. I'll find it later. You know, where you're able to say something without really making enemies, like our quote had said. But let me hear your thoughts on this. You know, when you watch the video, first of all, what came to your mind? Okay. Um, first, when that incident happened, um, I think last year, I totally was against it. Two years and, ago. Uh, was it two years ago? Yeah, it wasn't last year. It wasn't. Last year was COVID. Yeah, okay. Mm. I can't remember when it happened here, but um, I was totally against it. I didn't like uh, what that video did. I thought it was an aberration and all that. But when you sent that video to the group today and I looked at it and I watched it, it really made a lot of sense. You know, so I started looking at that matter from another light. And Trust me, there's no one in the situation in that in those shoes that will not take the decision to date, whether it was right or wrong. Um, the, the post um Emir, whether we like it or not, traditional rulers by our constitution, they are under the government. You cannot hold a parallel government with the politicians. By the time the imperialists came. They disparaged the traditional institution. There was nothing like the institutional institution. Even in England, they still have monarchy. It's constitutional monarchy. You would never see the Queen of England engage any prime minister or any policy of the government. She has time with the PMs. I think she does it every Tuesday or thereabout, where she engages them, but it's done behind the doors, closed doors. You will never see her have any opinion on anything in the government. So yeah. looking at what um, the late, I'm sorry, the post um, Emir did, whether we like it or not, the politicians, the governor is his superior, is his employer, because those are the people, it's the politician that announce their names, yeah. that gives them the staff of office. So even belittle them the more, they are under the local government. They don't even report directly to the state governors. Mm -hmm. They report to the local government chairman. So they are even under the local government chairman or probably um, a commissioner for local government affairs or something. Mm -hmm. So when you openly, openly criticize your superior, no matter what, it's ego would set him. Mm -hmm. And that person will not take it lightly. And it's happened to me before. You know, I didn't, ha I didn't think about it until I saw that when I was working with my boss, my former boss, as I, as you know me, Uwa, I would say it's the way it is. Yes. So most times when we are having meetings, we were about 25 to 30 lawyers. So when we are having um, chambers meeting and all that, file reviews and all that, there are times he will say some things I don't agree. And immediately there and then, somebody paying my salary, I will condemn it immediately. Mm -hmm. He will look at me and just shake his head. Whether it is right or wrong, I would say it. And everybody will keep it back. But I would look around like, somebody should support me. I'm saying the truth. Mm -hmm. So someday, he just called me to his office and said, why do you choose to embarrass me? And I said, embarrass you. Mm -hmm. He said, have you not read the 48 laws of power? Power, yes. He said, go and do it. You don't, you don't attack me openly. Mm -hmm. Even if you have opinions, you come into my office, you have my attention. We are close. Why don't you come in? And, and I said, but I was only saying the truth. He said, no. There are ways that you will say the truth. I wouldn't listen. And there are ways that you say it that I would listen. Mm -hmm. So I never applied tact. Mm -hmm. I was just tactless about it. Mm -hmm. And it was really, really an issue. So going by the video, I now thought about it. And, oh, that was what was absent. Mm -hmm. So tact doesn't mean that you shouldn't express yourself. You have to be assertive. Mm -hmm. But 
you have to be able to convey your message without missing the essence of that message, mm -hmm. but without hurting the other part. Absolutely. So I think what was missing in the, the post um line of communication was he was seen to be attacking the government. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? He mm. wasn't looking like he was correct in that. Mm. And if you look at it, his assistant truly, I think he has, um, he has this way of doing things like that. Absolutely. Well, when you look at the traditional institution, as the governor had said, it has its burdens and benefits. It has. You it, are yeah. part of the government. You should have applied more tax. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let me come to Mori. So there was something again that I observed. You know what I mean? I mean, this for me was a, a very beautiful video because it depicted a lot of things for me. You know, the, you know, you know that in Nigeria, um, people would say, a lot of people would argue that this Occupy, sorry, the, the hashtag NSARS would, would not have gotten the attention that it got if we had not Soros okay. You know, we didn't raise the, you know, we didn't take all our dirty um, lenient to the public, right? If we didn't do all of that, <laughs> we see somebody here. Hello, you know. So if we didn't do all of those things, if we didn't take them, um, put them in the in the public, um, um, that's on social media, right? So when I watched that video, um, when I watched the video where he was talking about the former governor of CBN, um, the ex uh, deposed Emir, when he said that when he was criticizing Jonathan's government. That he had the ears of President Jonathan. Why did he have to take it, you know, to the public without going to go and meet him quietly? You are a social media person. And I see a lot of times people are so quick, you know, they don't apply tact when it comes to calling out people on social media, you know. So how do you think you can manage both? Because I know there is, there is a fear that if I do not escalate this thing, right, it might, it might get swept under the carpet. Nobody might know that this is happening. So that's why people want to be quick to quickly put it online. But is that even sensible in, in, in that light? Let me come to Maury. <laughs> okay, so I think, I think the situation on ground is what would determine whether a person is supposed to be tactful or not. Yeah. Lamido is a, I, I see him as somebody who's really smart. So I don't know what's going on behind curtains, but I'm thinking that he would have tried everything. I don't know. I mean, it's what I would do, but I'm thinking that he would have tried everything within his means to, you know, speak to them privately. And when, when somebody brings something to the open, you know, publicly, it's always because most of the times they've tried to sort it out privately and it has not worked out. And, they, and you know, they just feel like the best way to talk about it is if I put it to the public and then, you know, these people will hold you um, accountable and responsible. And then maybe perhaps you will do what is right. Mm. And the issue of NSARS, to be honest, I don't know how to put it. Like, the, the Nigerian government have oppressed the youth for way too long. You know, so the NSARS thing, there was no way to be tactical about the, every Everybody was just in support of ruining everything. Because, okay, we've been tactical, we've kept quiet, we've mm. begged you, we've told you this, keeping, keeping our hair is not... But, 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 but the Nigerian youth have been talking, tweeting peacefully. You tweet at the governor of Lagos State, please do something. Your policemen are killing us. Mm. They are beating us. Nobody is saying anything. You know, it gets to a time where you just cannot hold this thing anymore. And then the last thing you are thinking of as a human being is that. I just want to... So it's survival mode at that point in time. It's like, okay, you could want to kill us. Come and kill all of us. Hmm. So at that point, people have thrown their cup of, I don't know whether to say reasoning away. It's just anger that is now fueling the whole thing. So you're not giving us light. You're not giving us water. You're not giving us good roads. Okay, don't kill us. Even that one you cannot do for us. And you are telling me to be tactful. I, I, I cannot be. What's the meaning of tact? <laughs> where my life is concerned. So that's where I, I feel you? like the Nigerian youth, you know, are coming from. And I'm totally in support. So you, you, you wait. So Mori, I'll, I'll let you come yeah, in, So Mori, you are you are telling me that you didn't, you you haven't, um, you are not able to 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 um to see how we would have used a tactful means in dealing with that situation, other than what happened. Is that what you're saying? Um, me, I'm saying I feel like what we've been doing for years before. I've, I don't think all my 20-something years of living, I don't know that I've seen a protest that is that powerful. Mm. So I feel like what we've been doing all these years is being tactful. Oh, we don't want to be rude to the Nigerian government. Oh, we are, we are, we are, we are what, what, I feel like, and that's, that's one of the reasons why, you know, the protest was so loud, because it seemed like 
kids were disrespecting the elders. We've tried, we've begged you people, we've called you sir, we've called you ma. Okay, it's high time we'll call you by your name. And he did, he, he just see that he shook them. He shook them, but so did, he, did he achieve the result? Let me come to Lamy. Oh, I quite I disagree with you when you come when you're talking about tax and governance. Okay. Especially the Nigerian government. They don't if you okay. if those people don't listen to nothing. Okay, Uwa, because... we said we said a peaceful protest. We went to the protest ground with nothing. That's tax. That's been tactful. I think we went to the peaceful uh, the protest ground. We carried matches, we carried we did not nobody is insulting anybody. We didn't with the Nigerian flag at hand. Please don't kill us. That's the highest level of tax I can ever think of. In mm. fact, that's tax itself. Mm. But what do we get? Mary, from? Can I finish? Okay, okay. let me okay. come in. So I think I quite disagree with who are saying the strategy would have been more, should have been more tactful. Don't forget that leaders are, are servants. They're supposed to be our servants. They went there to serve us. Mm -hmm. So we should not be begging for our rights. Mm. You must demand for your rights, mm. our constitutional rights. So I don't see how the citizens should engage the government with tax when clearly the government is a failure, a classical failure. It's a different thing if things were working, then some things were not working, then you might have you might have to engage the government and all that. Well, in the Nigerian story, everything is a failure. So where do you start from? Where's, where does tax come in when you cannot even demand, when you don't even have basic amenities? So I don't think fact and governance uh, at this point, we are, they are not our superiors. We elected them to serve us. So if we are not getting the benefit of, benefit of that, I think we should demand for it. And part of constitutional right of demand is protest. So I, I don't see, I don't think that's not a good, let me, clearly I, it's a good let strategy. Me, I, don't, I don't understand yes. how you're saying, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm losing my thoughts, but so, okay, now, if you say that the Nigerian, everything in Nigeria is a complete failure, that's not being tactful because there are some things that the government have done that is working, right? We might, it's just that we have not, for the level of capacity that Nigeria has to be able to deliver certain things, we haven't gotten that, we've not seen those kind of results. Can, that you, we're looking can for. you enumerate them for me? The things that are working. No, so for instance, right, um, we know currently that the the government is seriously working on infrastructure, right? Fixing, I mean, if you travel on ro by road, you know, in Nigeria, you will know that major, some of the major problems that we had, challenges we had on road, they've been, at least to some extent, it's working. So you can't say everything is a total failure. That's my point. Okay, look at the Lagos Ibadan um, <laughs> rail that. line. That, look at uh, Maury's face. The Lagos Ibadan <laughs> line. <laughs> Lagos, I mean, so, 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 so no, this is a conversation because why I'm saying this is that we have tried, you know, what Mori, Mori is saying is true. We've called them out on Twitter. We've done this. We've done that. But it seems not to be working. What, 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 so what, what, shouldn't what we... It's supposed to be bad in the first place. You said? Sorry, Thank you, Mori. Sorry, I didn't get you. Mori, come back again. It's supposed to be bad for us to be praising them for fixing it in the first place. Thank good you. road is my right. I have the right to good it's road. My human right. Especially if I pay my tax. I have the right to good road everywhere I go. So it's not even supposed to be bad in the first place for you to now say, let's praise them for fixing See, Both of you are crucifying me like this. I don't know if we open up, when we open our phone lines, I don't know how they will start, they will start killing me to, tonight on the show. But I'm just trying to say that. Can, can, we, can we look beyond all the challenges? That, yes, we know things are happening. So maybe this strategy of always calling out our government on social media is not being tactful. Maybe we should find the fight. Okay, for instance, okay, for instance, sorry, Lam, um, Mori, one minute. For instance, yesterday we had um, a chemist on the show and he was talking about quietly, why can't all Nigerians pick up their phones, pick up their notepad and write to their representatives? So for instance, your Senate, your, so start to write to them. Must we take everything and take it on social media? Right, there is, there's, a, there's a better way in handling it, right? We, we, we always feel like until we escalate it on social media, it never gets heard. But we've seen that we've done this thing time and time again. Yes, it might make the noise. It might draw the attention that we want it to draw. But did it eventually bring the result, which is a better Nigeria and better governance, 
The answer Ua is no. Ua, it brings results. It might not necessarily be the result for a better Nigeria right now. But now I'm going to give you an example. Do you see the peaceful protest of the opening of Lekki Toll Gates? Yes. Do you, did, you, did you see that they arrested this um, content creator, Mr. Macaroni? Yes. Do you know that the reason why people did not die on that day was because Mr. Macaroni was, between, was amongst them and because they know that if anything happens to him, the whole world is going to know. Okay. That's, that's change. That's the power that we have. That's social media. Okay, so you know what? That's, let's, that's, let's, let's, that's the only tool that you are going to use to listen to us. That's what we are going to keep using. Okay, so let me I go on the letters we want to write. What let do you me want go. To write? We don't even see. These people don't even go to office. Talk us about reading the letters. Mori, you're not being tactful. Let me go on a break. Mori! Let me go on a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. In the first place. <laughs>